So active ragdolls in games are some of the coolest things to me. They're also a little bit uh, black magic-y um, in that no one really talks about how to create them or how to make them behave the way you imagine them behaving. Like when you see a ragdoll in Grand Theft Auto V rolling on the ground on fire um, or flipping through the air and or in drunk mode and stumbling around as he tries to walk. Um, I haven't quite gotten them to that point yet, but I'm at a good place here where I have animations that get played and I can target those animations with my ragdolls. Um, so it allows me to do some pretty cool stuff. So over on the right, you see the white box man, and that is a static armature just playing this animation of it kind of floating out in space. Um, there's no, no physics affecting it. Uh, it'll always stay in that place and it never moves. It'll just play whatever animations I need it to play. Um, the orange box man is entirely physics based. Um, it's a rag doll that is made up of hinge joints and it targets the white box man's joints. Basically, it lets me do cool stuff like having the player try and hold animated poses while actually interacting with physics and the world. Um, so if you'll see, I can go like this and I can make the guy on the left crouch. And now my ragdoll will try and emulate that crouching position, but he'll still take into account all of the physics from the world, kind of bounce around a little bit. Um, it's a really, really cool thing to be able to mess around with and use. And it allows for a lot of dynamic and emergent gameplay uh, in something like Happy Wheels. It gives Happy Wheels its replayability and that it allows people to keep coming back because they want to see in what new way their character is going to slam into an object and get dismembered or broken in half. It took a while to get to the point where it's at now where it's accurate to the animation being played but still true to the physics simulation that it's in. Now I can do a whole bunch of fun stuff um, including stuff like letting the player uh, smash into objects and actually breaking limbs off. I don't know if I'll be able to hit something hard enough but we'll see. Uh, not quite. So over the next couple days I'll probably throw together a tutorial about how to create something like this yourself. It's really not that complex. It just took quite a bit of work to get the ragdolls to work without erratic twitching um, from forces or too much weight being attached to joints. Um, and it's built with entirely with Unity's built-in hinge joints and box colliders. Um, there's not a whole lot else going on. You could use whatever other colliders I guess you need. Um, the other cool thing uh, that I've built into this is that if I animate this box man to say bend in half and break and it really isn't um, a physical possibility or within the limitations that are set on the rigid body's constraints, uh, it will only go to, to its limits. So if I animated this guy with his elbow bending backwards behind it, which is not physically possible, this guy will stop targeting it past the limit of his joint. Um, which basically allows me to take a little bit more liberties and not have to work entirely within the same constraints for the animation. Um, and stops me from ever being able to create something that can completely break my ragdoll. Which is really, really nice. Um, so thank you for watching. Uh, I hope I covered everything in this video that I was planning on covering. It's like the 17,000th time I've recorded this video trying to uh, make sure that I don't forget about anything. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or uh, on the Reddit post. And other than that, though, I will hopefully see you guys next time.